so first let us have a revision of what we have learnt in the previous class so in the previous class we have discussed the four basic principles of engineering mechanics principle of transmissibility of forces it states that if a force acts on a rigid body at a particular point that force can be assumed to act at any other point along the same line of action but within the body right means we can transfer the force from one point to another on the same line of action without changing the effect of the force on the body that is principle of transmissibility of forces then principle of superposition of forces so if there are two systems one system is having some effect or a resultant because of the applied forces and the second system is in equilibrium means the resultant of that system is zero then the principle of superposition states that the system which is in equilibrium is added or subtracted from the given system the effect of that system remains same that is principle of superposition of forces then principle of moments when a body is in equilibrium we can say that the resultant of the force system on the body is zero when i am saying resultant is zero it implies that the resultant force is zero and the resultant moment is zero now what is the resultant moment simply it is the algebraic sum of the moments of all forces acting on the body when i am while taking the algebraic sum i will consider anti clockwise moments as positive clockwise moments as negative so algebraic sum is equal to zero so by taking these clockwise moments which are negative to the right hand side of the equation we can say that the sum of anti clockwise moments is equal to the sum of clockwise moments for a body which is in rotational equilibrium so that is principle of moments then verigran's theorem so verigran's theorem states that the algebraic sum of the moments of all forces acting on a body about any point is equal to the moment of resultant of those forces about the same point so this verigran's theorem is used to determine the position of resultant for parallel force system and for general force system okay so we'll move to the next topic that is resolution of a force here resolution and composition these two are opposite words resolution means splitting a force into two or more parts without changing the effect of the force on the body whereas composition means it is the reverse of resolution combining all the forces acting on the body to get a single force is nothing but composition simply determination of resultant is nothing but the composition of forces so in resolution we are splitting one force into two or more without changing the effect whereas in composition we are combining those parts we are combining different forces to get a single force that single force is nothing but resultant force right so the process of splitting a given force into two or more parts without changing its effect is called resolution of forces now let us consider this truck which is at rest it is being pulled by the car by applying force f 
now i am replacing this car with two persons who are pulling the truck by applying forces f1 and f2 so the effect of the force on the truck remains same in both the cases initially force f is applied on the truck and we are replacing that force f with f1 and f2 to have the same effect means simply i am replacing this f with two forces f1 f2 or i can say that i am splitting this force into two parts f1 f2 without changing the effect of this force on the truck so here this f1 and f2 are known as components of the force f so the point to be noted the force which is split into different parts is known as resolved force and the parts into which the force is split are called components or resolutes so in this particular case f is the resolved force and f1 and f2 are the components of the force or you can say the resolutes generally we are going to split we are going to resolve the force into two types of components perpendicular components non perpendicular components non perpendicular components are again two types oblique components and parallel components so both are non perpendicular so force f is to be resolved along say x and y directions which are mutually perpendicular saying f1 f2 which are known as perpendicular components generally these x and y axis horizontal and vertical they are mutually perpendicular so we will resolve the force along horizontal and vertical direction that is along x and y known as perpendicular components now if a force f is to be resolved along two lines which are not perpendicular then those components are known as oblique components is the angle between them is not 90 degrees if this force f is to be resolved again say two components along the lines which are parallel to the given force then those components are known as parallel components right so here the scope of our study is limited to the resolution of force into two components either two mutually perpendicular to oblique or two parallel components so these perpendicular components are also known as rectangular components now let us discuss in detail the perpendicular or rectangular components let force f b acts at point o considering x and y axis let theta is the angle made by force f with respect to x axis now by drawing lines parallel to x and y axis we get a rectangle o a b c now the component of force f along the x axis i am calling it as fx represented by the line or side of the rectangle oa similarly the vertical component is represented by fy represent it is given by the side of the rectangle oc hence the name rectangular components now here oc is equal to ab so that is fy now from the right angle triangle o a b cos theta is equal to adjacent side o a upon hypotenuse o b so cos theta is equal to o a upon o b but o a is f x upon o b is f that gives you f x is equal to f cos theta similarly sin theta is equal to opposite side f y by hypotenuse f f y is equal to f sin theta so this f cos theta and f sin theta are known as 
the x and y components or perpendicular components of force f right please note these points the component adjacent to the angle is always cos and the other perpendicular component is sin for example see in this uh, figure second figure force p is making an angle alpha with respect to y axis so the component adjacent to the angle so when you are talking about py which is adjacent to alpha you can take it as p cos alpha and the other perpendicular component is p sin alpha suppose if you find out the angle made by force p with respect to x axis let us say theta if you know this alpha you can write theta is equal to 90 minus alpha then you can consider px is p cos theta and py is p sin theta are you getting my point if you want to say always the cos theta is horizontal component sin theta is vertical component in that case theta is the angle made by the force with respect to horizontal only or if you want to resolve as it is if the angle is not with respect to y you can consider directly y component as cos alpha and x component is sin alpha because when you are saying here theta is 90 minus alpha here px is equal to p cos theta right whereas py is equal to p sin theta that is p sin of 90 minus alpha are you getting my point so that becomes cos alpha here whereas here it is sin alpha so that is as per your convenience you can consider you can resolve as it is otherwise you find out the angle with respect to x and say x component is cos y component is sin so if the component is acting towards right or upwards we will treat it as positive or otherwise acting towards left or downwards we will treat them as negative next oblique components non perpendicular components let this force f which is acting at point o is to be resolved along two lines one and two which are not perpendicular to each other now by drawing lines parallel to uh, let us say this alpha is the angle made by f with respect to line 1 beta is the angle made by f with respect to line 2 now by drawing lines parallel to the 1 and 2 we will have a parallelogram o a b c right so the component of f along line 1 i am saying f1 represented by the side of the parallelogram oa similarly the component along line 2 is represented by f2 same as that of the adjacent side of the parallelogram oc as per parallelogram law of forces the diagonal of this parallelogram gives you the resultant of these two forces f1 and f2 right here i am resolving this force f into two parts f1 f2 other way around i can say that f is the resultant of f1 f2 it is one and the same right i am splitting f into f1 f2 without changing the effect now when i combine f1 f2 you will get f which is the resultant force okay now what is the angle made by f2 with respect to line 1 angle made by f2 with respect to line 1 it is alpha plus beta right so here oc is equal to ab so i can say ab is f2 and the angle made by f2 with respect to line 1 is alpha plus beta now if you consider the triangle oab in parallelogram these are the alternate angles this angle b is beta now we have for triangle oab angle o is alpha angle b is beta whereas angle a is 180 minus alpha plus beta 
right? This total angle is 180, so it is 180 minus alpha plus beta. Now, for the triangle OAB using sine rule, what is the sine rule? It is A upon sine A is equal to B upon sine B is equal to right C upon sine C. So where a small ABC are the sides of the triangle, and uh, in sine ABC, ABC are the angles, opposite angles, right? So for this triangle OAB, I can write OA upon sine of opposite angle, that is sine beta, is equal to AB upon sine of opposite angle, that is sine alpha, is equal to OB upon sine of 180 minus alpha plus beta. So here OA is nothing but F1, AB is nothing but F2, and OB is F. And sine 180 minus alpha plus beta can be written as sine alpha plus beta. Sine 180 minus theta is sine theta. So this expression gives you F1 is equal to F into sine beta upon sine alpha plus beta, and F2 is equal to F sine alpha upon sine alpha plus beta. So these two expressions are to be remembered for solving numerical examples. So here F1, F2 are the components of force F along the line one and two. Please note down these expressions. So when you are talking about F1 in the numerator. It is beta. What is beta? Beta the angle made by F two with respect to F. When you are talking about F two in the numerator, it is sine alpha. Alpha is the angle made by F with respect to line one or F one. See, to resolve a force into perpendicular components, you must know any one angle made by the force either with respect to x or with respect to y. Because the other angle by default it is 90 minus the given angle. If the force is to be resolved into two non-perpendicular components, here you must know both the angles. Means angles made by the force with respect to both the lines. That is alpha and beta. Remember, alpha is always angle made by F with respect to F1. Beta is angle made by F with respect to F2. That's what written over here. To resolve a force into oblique components, we must know the angles made by the force with respect to both the lines. That is alpha and beta. Then parallel components. Let this force F, which is acting vertically downwards, is to be resolved along two lines. Which are parallel to each other. Let the distance from the force to these two lines be A and B, respectively, from line one and two. The components of F along line one, say F one, along line two, is F two. Now we have to resolve this F into F one, F two. Other way around, I can say that F is the resultant of F one and F two. Am I right? When you combine F1 and F2, you will get F. So F is the resultant of F1 and F2. Now I am considering a point in the plane at a distance c from line two, at a perpendicular distance c from line two, that is F2. Being F is the resultant of F1 and F2, I can write one equation as F1 plus F2 is equal to F. Am I right? So this is equation one. Now here we have to find out f1 and f2. There are two unknowns, so we must have two equations. One equation is f1 plus f2 is equal to f. F is known to us, right? Now for second equation, I use Verignan's theorem. What is Verignan's theorem? Sum of algebraic sum of the moments of the forces about any point. Is equal to moment of resultant about the same point. So here, taking moments about point O, the moment of F1 plus moment of F2 about point O 
is equal to moment of f f is the resultant about the same point now what is moment of f1 f1 into perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to point c so f1 into a plus b plus c plus what is moment of f2 f2 into perpendicular distance c which is equal to moment of resultant here f is the resultant so it is f into b plus c okay so solving these two equations remember here we know these distances a b c also we know the magnitude of force f now we have to find out the magnitudes of f1 f2 so knowing a b c and f using these two equations we can find out f1 f2 which are the components of f along the line 1 and 2 right now let us solve some examples so you be ready with the notebook pen and the calculator with you please note down the statement of this problem and draw the figure find the components of forces p and q in x and y directions as shown in figure so what is given the magnitude of force p as 500 and the magnitude of force q as 300 and the directions are also shown in the figure you have to find out the x and y components horizontal and vertical components of force p and q so this is the given figure the direction of force p is 25 degrees with respect to x and the direction of force q is also given here the slope of this force is given 3 4 3 horizontal 4 vertical let us say beta is the direction of this force q with respect to horizontal so from pythagoras theorem in a right angle triangle two sides are say 3 and 4 the hypotenuse is 5 5 so you go while writing this cos beta sin beta you can uh, make use of these values 3 4 5 so no need to calculate the angle right now let us see the components of force p see the sense of force it is acting away from point o and it is lying in the second quadrant therefore the x component is acting towards left which is negative and y component is upwards to be taken as positive whereas for force q q is in third quadrant it is acting away from the origin so here x component is towards left and y component is downwards right and the angle made by q with respect to x is beta components of p we know that the component adjacent to the angle is cos so directly you can say px is equal to p cos alpha being it is acting towards left i am taking it as minus so minus p cos alpha that gives you 453.15 newton acting towards left py other perpendicular component is p sin alpha that is 211.31 newton upwards you please do the calculations so don't copy as it is you are supposed to do the calculations and verify the given values and uh, while finding the components of q here qx is adjacent to the angle beta so directly you can take qx is equal to q cos beta but it is acting towards left therefore minus so minus 300 cos beta cos beta is adjacent side upon hypotenuse 3 by 5 so it is 180 newton towards left and qy is q sin beta being it is acting downwards we are taking it as minus so minus 
sin beta is opposite side by hypotenuse 4 upon 5 that is 240 newton downwards okay please note down the statement and draw figure a man pulls with a force of 400 newton on a rope attached to the pole as shown in figure what are the horizontal and vertical components of the force exerted by the rope at the points a and b so it's given the magnitude of force is 400 newton and you are asked to find out the horizontal and vertical components means simply x and y components of force f at point a as well as at point b so this is the given figure let the angle made by the rope ab with the horizontal as theta then from the right angle triangle A, B, C, we have tan theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side, 5 by 7. That gives you theta is equal to 35.54. Or also using Pythagoras theorem, you can find out the length of AB using 7 and 5. Okay. Then using that uh, those three dimensions, you can write cos theta and sin theta also. Now, components of force F at point A. Now, see, this person is applying, is pulling the rope from the pole at point A. Means the nature of force in the rope is tensile force. Tensile force means it always acts away from the point. Now, the point under consideration is A. So, the magnitude of force is 400 Newton. That is known to us. But what is the direction of force? Direction of force is along the rope, that is along AB. But what is the sense? It is acting from A to B. Are you getting my point? We are considering the effect of force at point A. So it is acting away from A, being it is tensile force along the line AB. Solve into horizontal and vertical components. Here, horizontal component is towards the right, vertical component is downwards. The angle made by F with respect to horizontal is theta, which is 35.54. So, the component adjacent to the angle is always cos. So, FH is equal to F cos theta. So, it is 400 cos 35.54, 325.48, acting towards right. Similarly, other vertical component is sin theta. Being it is acting downwards, I am taking minus, minus F sin theta. That gives you 232.51 Newton downwards. Components of force at point B. So, uh, the horizontal component will be uh, 325.48 towards left. And the right. vertical will be 232.51 upwards. Exactly. Very good. So here we are resolving that force at point B. So being the nature of force in the rope is tensile, when you are considering point B, it will act from B to A. It is a pulling force, right? So the direction is same as theta with respect to horizontal. But the only difference is here X component, horizontal component is towards left and the vertical component is upwards. The magnitudes are same, but the directions are opposite. So X component is F cos theta, being it is towards left minus. So 325.48 towards left. And Y component is Q sine theta upwards, 232.51 upwards. So, it is very important where you are resolving the given force, at which point you are resolving it. So, accordingly, the sense 
or the direction of components will change. Now here there are two problems given. So you are requested to note down the statement along with the figure and solve the problems. I'm going to ask, I'm going to call any roll number. So you must be ready with the answer. It's like this. So the horizontal component is towards left, vertical component is upwards, making 65 degrees with the horizontal. Horizontal component is minus F cos 65. Vertical component is F sine 65. So 316.96 and 679.73. So all of you got these answers? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. yes sir. And the second uh, sum fusion. You can check the values. Then one more example. You please note it down and try to solve. A block weighing 15 kilo Newton rests on an inclined plane making an angle of inclination 30 degrees with the horizontal. Determine the magnitude of the components of weight parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Point five. Right. So here I will show you the here the point to be noted in the statement determine the magnitude of the components of weight so nothing to do with the direction therefore specifically they have asked magnitude okay because i am taking this uh, slope of inclination like this somebody may take the inclination will be like this with the help of horizontal 30 degrees in that case, the components, the direction and the sense of these components will change. No? Therefore, you have to find out the magnitude only. So here, inclination is making 30 degrees with horizontal. So from that, the weight of the block, which will always act in vertically downwards. So it is making an angle 30 degrees with respect to y. I'm taking x axis along the plane, uh, they're parallel to the plane, y axis perpendicular to the plane. So we have this 30 degrees with respect to y axis. So y component is w cos 30. And x component, other perpendicular component is w sin 30. So as per the figure which I have assumed the orientation and getting here x component is minus but anyhow the magnitude is 7.5 whereas y component is also minus but the magnitude is 13 kilo newton perpendicular to the plane is over here there is here it should be 13 kilo newton And it will be white. 